This is Grand Durham's Nothing But Truth. Well, across the country, around the world, I got to tell you something. The truth is winning out. Oh, it's true. Oh, it's true. Grand Durham's Nothing But Truth, proudly on AFR Talk. And we return with the question, is it time to raise the minimum wage? Why don't you ask business owners? They have to do it. No, 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 no. That's not the question. You don't understand, do you? Is it time to raise the minimum wage? I mean, they can do it. Who's they? Who's they? A government could do it. They can make they can they can demand it. The people can do it. Power to the people. Yes. And I got a good way to go about this as an advocate to raise the minimum wage if I were one. I could say that the people who do not support it hate poor people. But that's irrational. That doesn't make any sense. If they did not like poor people, they wouldn't have jobs open. They wouldn't allow for opportunity. They just wouldn't be in business. Oh, no, it's about exploiting the poor person. I get it. Because we're all poor, by the way. In some way, economically, we, we start at a certain point. We just don't jump into a wonderful, great job. It takes time. And then you got those mean time jobs. You ever have those? I did. Mean time jobs in between gigs. <laughs> but the bottom line is this. There are protests going around the country at McDonald's, fast food restaurants, where people are saying, you know what? We need to double the minimum wage. We need That would be a fair living wage. We cannot support a family on what we make. Neil Cavuto interviewing an activist, what it looks like to be, and a worker who is, she is holding her child in her hand. And Neil Cavuto asks a few questions, and he starts out, and he asks, why the demand? Why, why are you doing this? Roll it. Workers right now in the fast food industry, you know, pretty much unanimously are working minimum wage jobs. And if folks aren't making minimum wage, they're making pennies above minimum wage. And what we find is that, you know, people can't afford to put food on the table. People can't afford to even take the train to work sometimes. Um, and in one of the fastest growing industries in this country where, you know, fast food corporations are making more profit than they've ever made in the history of the fast food industry is that while they are getting richer and while they are making money hand over fist workers themselves are not getting a raise workers continue to make the same wage they made five years ago with no raises and it's sometimes even just you know pennies over a span of five ten years I just wanted to add to that though that you know they think that you know we're making so much money and if we follow a particular type of budget I can't afford to pay rent. I can't afford to feed my children. I can't even afford the, the health care for my husband. Things that we, you guys see as luxury and just, you know, everyday life, it's luxury to me, and it's not fair. A few quick facts on this real quick, just to let you know. about We're talking about 2% of all wage and salary employees, just a little over, according to the BLS, earn this, about $1.6 million. We also look at the fact that over 63% of workers who would benefit, quote-unquote, from a raise of this are second or third earners in the family. 43% of the workers who would benefit live in households with incomes over $50,000 a year, so nearly half. How about minimum wage workers supporting a family? Well, it appears that 94% of the people who are earning the minimum wage and the adult in the family had a spouse who was also empl employed and earned far above that. Just some facts, okay, so, all right. Now, when we look at the confrontation that Neil Cavuto has, and not confrontation, but the questions that are asked regarding the minimum wage and the costs of it and the consequences of the minimum wage and raising it arbitrarily, which exactly what the government does in the sense that it's not tied to the business speaking to the market value of the person. It's, but what happens when 
you do this is businesses shed jobs. We have, in some cities, over half of teens unemployed. Oftentimes, 25%. We're looking at a good proportion of the people earning minimum wage are teenagers. So you just get more unemployed teenagers. Plus, the business has a big problem making money. Uh, it hurts the business productivity. What do the protesters say to that? Roll it. I say, why are you the companies, you the, the franchisees, you're, you're getting raises, you're, you're making billions and millions of dollars per year. Why can't we barely survive? Why is it we who are employees, who work, who put in hard, uh, um, hard sweat, why can't we survive? Why, why do we have to go hungry at night? Why can't we pay rent? Uh, $8, $7.25, $7.50 is not enough. Okay. Again, 94% of the adults who are earning the minimum wage, 94% of them have a spouse that's earning, and I'm talking about the families here, have a spouse that's earning over $40,000. This according to the BLS as well as a number of research studies that have been done on the minimum wage. Two-thirds of the people that are, or excuse me, it was actually greater than that, pardon me, but it, it's greater than two-thirds of the people who are earning the start at minimum wage in the year get an increase. But again, there are questions, there are answers, and the answer, again, is look at how much they're making. Do you see the Obama world that we're living in? Okay. And now we go to the responsibility of the corporation. Is it the responsibility of the corporation, McDonald's in this case, to provide for a job that pays a living wage? Roll it. Yeah, I think it is. A, I think it is their responsibility. It's the fast food corporation's responsibility in themselves to make sure that the employees that run their company, they run their companies, they serve the burgers, you know, they take the money, they open the restaurant, they clean the restaurant, they do all of those things. It's their responsibility to make sure that these workers are compensated so they can actually provide for their families. Unfortunately, what many times happens is that we, the taxpayers, end up footing the bill for what the corporations don't pay in wages. People have to rely on public assistance. People have to get subsidized health care because these corporations don't provide it. And that's just not, that's not fair at all. And it is actually their obligation to make sure that workers can provide for themselves and their families. Why is that their obligation like to make sure all of their that. basic expenses it's are covered? Why is that their responsibility? I would like to just add to that is their responsibility because when they're cutting our checks, not giving us lunch breaks, you're not getting us benefits, it's their responsibility when you're doing illegal actions against us, you're, you're doing wage theft. Yes, it's your responsibility because if, if we're making a bare minimum and then you're stealing from us, of course we barely can survive. So yes, I hold you accountable and you are responsible. one 589 8840 one Five eight nine eight eight four zero. Which side do you agree with? Do you, do you agree with the workers, or do you, or the protesters, or do you agree with the corporation or people like me who are against this? Well, one triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. We will take calls, and as we are waiting for your phone calls, we will go to Milton Friedman asked about this very issue on Phil Donahue's show 30 years ago. Roll it. Before we break here, and we have to, I want to make sure I understand you. Because the government sets a minimum wage, we what does start? McDonald's do? McDonald's? It can't hire as many teenagers. It, it uh, improves its capital equipment to serve. It does less business because it has to charge higher uh, uh, hamburger prices. In the absence of a, of a minimum wage, uh, McDonald's would be able to offer a larger number of jobs to a larger number of youngsters and they would be able to acquire some skills and not only McDonald's. Uh, so we hire more people, more people get work. Younger that's people. The younger people would work and they get, get a chance, chance to, to develop, develop their skills, skills to become productive members of society instead of being driven into a cycle of poverty and of welfare, which is absolutely deplorable. Milton Friedman, The Economist, returns in a moment. So what do you think? The phone lines are up, waiting to process the phone calls. Cedra doing always a great job, and we will get you right here, right on. Uh, before we close out the hour, I want to know your opinion on this. 
one triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero one triple eight five eight nine eight eight four zero. Just so we're clear, is my screen does not have any names yet on the screen. Gotcha. All right. So here's the, the outline. We we have people demanding this. Is there any personal accountability here? People developing a skill set. Where does that come in? You see, I, I don't like the victimology. I also don't like going to a business and blaming them. Isn't it up to us to improve our skill set? 888-589-8840. 1-888-589-8840. And we will go to Sam in Arkansas. Sam, what do you, what do you think? The protesters have a point? Sam, go ahead. Yeah, okay. Uh, first off, there's two two sides to this. Um, if the corporations say, okay, so we raise the minimum wage, it's only going to take a little while, And I, because I've been there, we've done this, uh, it's only going to take a little while for the ripple effect to come back around. We raise the wage, so therefore it costs more to put our product or our service or whatever out the door. So you're going to wind up with, uh, you've opened the higher door. prices. All right. So they say we've got to have, we, we we have to increase our prices on the other end, on on the retail end. We've got to increase our prices to make up the difference. Well, they don't just increase the prices to make up the difference for the minimum wage. They throw in an extra percent of profit. So they lose business. They've compensated themselves an extra amount of profit, and we've raised the minimum wage. What it falls down to is at the end of the week. After a month or so, after the cycle has made full circle, we don't have as much to spend at the end of our check, even though the numbers are higher. So it's a catch-22, and the yeah. solution is reduce greed in corpus, uh, in the corporate circles. Well, I, I wouldn't say reduce greed. Greed's a constant, and I have no problem with providing a good or a service. By the way, thank you very much for your phone call up against the good or a service. I don't think it's the problem of the corporation. Corporations, by the way, are just businesses that grow into, take a small business, become a big business, and all of a sudden it's a corporation. Okay? I don't think it's up to the business to sit back and say, you know what, arbitrarily we got to raise this, and then it puts it on us. You're right, there's a consequence. Every action has a reaction. Higher prices, less jobs, and guess what? Never getting trained in that way. You kill the job engine. And it's an Obama world. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth, probably on AFR Talk. More Peter Ferrara next. AFR Talk. <laughs> 